two or three sets and i wish all my subscribers a happy diwali i was busy in organizing conferences so i was not able to upload the video coming to the first case you can see there are multiple nodular calcified lesions noted in bilateral lung fields and also you can see there is curvilinear calcification along the diaphragmatic margins typically involving the medial two thirds and sparing the lateral one thirds so this is a classical case of asbestosis so these are nothing but calcified pleural plaques which mimics holly leaves so this uh, calcified pleural plaques mimics the holly leaves this is the holly leaf with fruit so this is holly leaf sign typically seen in asbestosis next case you can see there is a cavitated lesion with mass or uh, ball like structure noted within the cavity surrounded by typical air crescent sign so this is air crescent sign seen in invasive aspergillosis coming to other other sign is monoid sign most of the people will confuse between air crescent sign and monoid sign this is a case of vaginal granulomatosis where you can see there are multiple cavitated lesions with ball or mass within the cavity which is surrounded by air circumferentially in 360 degrees so this is nothing but monoid sign so monoid sign nothing but remember the ball or mass should be mobile within the cavity so this is a ct chest you can see this is the supine film and this is the supine and this is the prone position and this typical you can see there is movement of the mass or ball within the cavity so remember monoid sign in aspergilloma and air crescent sign in invasive aspergillosis so the difference is air crescent sign is seen in invasive aspergillosis or back which is non mobile and there is really no positional change usually seen in immunocompromised whereas monoid sign seen in uh, fungal ball in pre existing pulmonary cavity mostly aspergilloma the mobile mass should within the cavity so remember mobile for monad m for m and the mass gravitates or moves and it's seen in immunocompetent next case you can see there is a homogeneous opacification of the right upper lobe uh, limited by the horizontal fissure but he clearly you can see the medial margin is convex and the lateral margin is concave so resembling this s s shaped so this is called golden s sign uh, typically seen in upper lobe masses or central lung masses uh, which will be causing obstru obstruction and collapse of the upper lobes so remember golden s sign so medial convexity is due to the mass lateral concavity is due to the collapse next uh, you can see there is a radio uh, this is this is a child presented with fever and uh, swelling in the chest wall you can see there is a radio peak radio peak shadow which is noted against the chest wall with broad base towards the chest wall and also there is a soft tissue swelling within the chest wall there is typical sclerosis of the rib this is left fifth rib up here sclerosed there is no destruction as as, as such so i will try to give the illustration in this case here you can see this is the mass and when we line uh, draw a line along the mass and when we draw a line along the chest wall you can see or the rib cage which is forming obtuse angle so this obtuse angle helps in differentiating this mass is extra pulmonary mass or a pleural based mass rather than a lung mass so here you can see this is the chest wall swelling and this is the sclerosis so this was a case of empyema necessitans and the sign you should remember is incomplete border sign or pregnant lady sign which is nothing but you can see this medial borders are very clear sharply demarcated than the lateral borders because the x-ray rays are tangential to the medial border medial borders are clearly seen than the lateral borders which are seen merging with the chest wall and the obtuse angle between the mass and the chest wall differentiate extra pulmonary masses from pulmonary masses so remember incomplete border sign or pregnant lady sign next case here you can see there are this is the lateral chest radiograph the lower half of the thoracic vertebra are loosened when compared with the upper half of the thoracic vertebra because lower half is uh, superimposed with the lungs whereas the upper half is there is superimposed with the soft tissues humerus and all so this will be more radio dense than the lower half which is called more black sign so, but whenever you can see there is a loss of the lung whenever the lung is filled with a consolidation or collapse or even a fusion and even mass in the paravertebral locations or paraspinal locations patients the black the lucent zone is lost which is called as spine sign positive so remember spine sign positive in cases of either consolidation effusions uh, bronchogenic carcinomas and even paraspinal neoplasms like neurogenic neoplasms so this is more black sign this is spine sign positive 
next case you can see there is a homogeneous opacification of the left lung zone but there is a crescent shape or sickle shape like lucency noted in the paramediastinal location this is nothing but the collapsed upper lobe and this is lucency is nothing but the superior segment of the lower lobe trying to compensate the loss of the upper lobe between the mediastinum and the collapsed upper lobe so this crescent e is nothing but a german word left means air and shikel means crescent which is nothing but german word called left shell so this paramediastinal lucency is nothing but left shell sign here the ct you can clearly see this is the collapsed and this is the lucent zone that is apical segment of the superior segment of the lower lobe trying to compensate the loss of the by the upper lobe so this is left shell sign next you can see there are a bilateral hilar group of adenopathy and even there is a subcarinal group of lymph nodes so these are the lymph nodes these are the lateral radiographs typically they mimic a radiopaque complete radiopaque ring around the lucent bronchus here also see this is the lucent bronchus and surrounded by a ring of radiopaque radiopacity which is nothing but called downward sign so downward sign can be seen in lateral chest radiographs in tuberculosis lymphoma Uh, and remember downward sign in other other radiology other radiology like downward are target sign in interception of pyloric stenosis double downward sign in dengue encephalitis downward sign in avian of bone and bone scintigraphy downward sign in nuclear imaging in brain in abscess but can be also seen in tumors vascular malformations metastasis hematoma and cva next this is a common uh, regularly you will see there are multiple nodular lesions scattered in bilateral lung fields which are called cannonball metastasis and also you can see there is a thyroid mass here with calcifications so this is a thyroid malignancy with cannonball metastasis and remember the mnemonic la mnemonic as easily as teleradiology packs that is t for testicular or thyroid carcinoma e is for endometrial carcinoma r is renal carcinoma p is prostate carcinoma a is adrenal carcinoma c is chorio carcinoma and s for synovial sarcoma so remember teleradiology packs as a mnemonic for cannonball metastasis uh, next case feeding vessel sign you can see uh, there are not uh, uh, small nodules which are cavitating and there is a feeding vessel entering into the uh, cavitating nodule and these nodules are surrounded by ggos and even there is consolidation with air bronchograms so this feeding vessel sign is classically seen in septic emboli mostly in 67 to 100 percent of cases of septic embolus patients so remember feeding vessel sign for specific for septic emboli but feeding vessel sign can be also seen in metastasis so this was a case of metastasis where, where you can see the feeding vessel sign so feeding vessel sign can be also seen in metastasis even granulomatous granulomas hemorrhagic nodules vasculitis infarcts and pulmonary av malformations these are the few references i want i once again wish all my subscribers a happy diwali thank you all